So the word mercy to answer your question or the word loving kindness as it is mostly translated mm. in the Bible is at the center of the concept of salvation. Mm -hmm at the center of the concept of creation, mm -hmm. at the center of the concept of salvation, and at the center of the concept of restoration. restoration. Mm -hmm. So when you're asking... Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us on TBP, the Biblical Perspective Channel. My name is Ruth South, and you're with my colleague, Pedro. Thank you for joining us again, Pedro. And we are in the book of Psalms, and today's study is entitled, Your Mercy Reaches Unto the Heavens. And before we go into it, let us pray. Pedro, could you pray for us, please? Let us pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for blessing us with this opportunity to study your word. We call upon your Holy Spirit to lead us through it and to bless us with learning unto salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So thank you, Pedro. So we're looking at your mercy reaches to the heavens. It's, it, I want to discuss with you through a, through a series of a few questions. And my first question is, what is it about the mercy of God that causes the psalmist to be so vocal about it as they pour out their emotions before God and men? Yeah, this is, this is a good question. Because the Psalms, as we've already said, mm -hmm. is about pouring emotions to God. Okay. Not just pouring emotions, but pouring emotions to God. And to answer your question, I would want you to read a text for me that is found in Psalm 57 and verses 9 and 10, please. Okay. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Notice yes. that this is an attempt on the part of the psalmist to somehow mm. give a measure to those who are listening and to himself mm. of the mercy of God. Okay. When he says, your mercy is yeah. unto the heavens. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to put that in context. What is he really saying? If we look at how we measure today okay. everything, for instance, when he says, your mercy reaches unto the heaven, mm -hmm. in the 21st century, Standing from the ground, we can measure the distance between the different layers of the atmosphere. Yeah. We have the ability to do this and say, this layer it, uh, is at that distance. That other layer is at that distance and so on and so forth. But for the psalmist 3,000 years ago, mm. there was no way he could know the distance between mm -hmm. the ground where he stood and the heavens. So basically, he is saying your mercy is limitless when he says oh. your mercy reaches unto the heavens. And in his eyes, this is what he is pouring out. Okay. He is pouring out no. something that he is overwhelmed with, and that thing is the mercy of God. Okay, that is lovely. Imagine you can't, you can't measure. So where would the idea of measuring God's mercy come from then? Because you just said you can't measure, but where did he get that from? Yeah, so this is a good question because it just allows us to realize while he is saying yeah. there is no measure to it, at the same time it is an attempt for him to measure it because he can't help himself, he is a human being. As human beings, mm. we naturally put a measure on everything True. because we are limited beings in nature. Yeah. And that experience is in the corporate as well as the individual experience of life. 
What do I mean? The experience of wanting to put a measure or a measurement mm -hmm. on everything. That happens corporately and that happens individually because that's the nature of humanity. We all share. Now, yeah. I want you to read for me. And, and that, that is just experience of life. Read Psalm 136 and just verse 1 for me, please. I will give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. All right. His mercy endureth yes. forever. Again, there is an attempt here of measuring, mm -hmm. this time in time. Now, this psalm, you asking, where does that come yeah. from? It is, again, humanity pouring out mm. and being visible in their relationship with God, still within the context of mercy. What is in, uh, what is of importance in this particular mm -hmm. psalm is that it is made of 26 lines. Okay. We've already said that the psalms are literally very skillfully written mm -hmm. and also put together. The book of psalms made of 150 psalms. This particular one here has 26 lines to it. And every single line ends with the phrase, and you will see that more perfectly in the original language, mm -hmm. it ends with the phrase, because his mercy is forever yeah. because his mercy is forever that comes from our experience of life our willingness or our our desire mm. to measure it comes from our experience of life and in this psalm particularly as i as i said 26 lines but it has three parts to it. Okay. If you read the whole thing, which we're not going to do now, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Mm. The first part is about the, the power of God to create the universe. Mm. And within that context, the psalmist says, your mercy is forever. Mm. All right. The second part is the power of God to save or to deliver his people from bondage mm -hmm. in that song, three yeah. parts. The first part is the power of God to create. The second part is the power of God to deliver his people from bondage. The third part in this psalm okay. is the power of God to give his people the inheritance that he promised to them. So basically, when you look at those three things, you have the power of God to create the power of God. So power of creation, mm -hmm. power of salvation, mm -hmm. and power of restoration. Powerful. And all of that within the context of the mercy of God repeatedly for every single line yeah. that lasts or is forever. Are you with me? Yes. So that comes from our experience yeah. of being both human mm -hmm and also dependent okay. on God. Lovely, lovely. So given all of that right, the three powers right, what is the role of the mercy of God in these things? The, the word mercy yes. in the original language mm. has a wide range of meanings and usages in the Hebrew Bible. Okay. It can be translated uh, as so many things, mm -hmm. but it is most commonly mm. translated as loving 
kindness. Beautiful. So you're asking me about the role of the mercy of God. So God's loving kindness mm. is at the center. Mm. You remember I told you three things. Mm -hmm. So the word mercy, to answer your question, or the word loving kindness, the loving kindness of God, as it is mostly translated mm. in the Bible, is at the center of the concept of salvation, mm -hmm. at the center of the concept of sorry it's creation yeah at the center of the concept of creation mm -hmm. at the center of the concept of salvation and at the center of the concept of restoration, restoration. Mm -hmm. so when you're asking for the role of the mercy of God this is what you need to think about and if you look at the Psalms 136 as you read it at home yeah. and you see those three parts and you see it within the historical context of Israel I invite you to broaden your perspective because creation salvation and restoration mm -hmm. goes beyond Israel so you are in this song. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a quick synopsis of how it works. If you go to Genesis chapter 12 and you read for me verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God saying to Abraham, yeah. in you all families. So it goes beyond Israel, which is not formed yet, That's right. but is coming through Abraham. But indeed, all families, that means humanity. Sure. Now, absolutely, you are in there, I am in there, and everybody listening to us is counted in there. Mm. Your mercy is forever all right mm. now the second text i want you to read for me is galatians chapter 3 verse 8 and the scripture foreseeing that god would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed what is important here is the yes. gospel was preached and That's right. i will remove the word heathen there i don't like using it and people should understand that it's not that's right. uh, 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 a biblical word mm. nations mm -hmm. okay he preached the gospel that the nations yes. will be saved or justified he preached that to Abraham and the nations are who read for me or quote to me a text that you know which is John chapter 3 verse 16 please okay for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting. So you can see the mercy of God was always there, including the everyone. When the psalmist says, for the mercy of God is forever, 26 times in 26 lines, he knows what he is saying. Mm. That plan of the mercy of God carrying humanity forever yes. has been there for millennia That's right. in the development of it. Are you with me? Yes. And this is what we clearly saw with those three texts I ask you to read for me. Genesis 12, 3, Galatians 3, 8, and John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. And that plan went through different stages at times to be developed. But it is ongoing. Why? Because it is at the, because the mercy of God is at the center That's of it. Right. You know what? Beautiful. God, it's the only thing that sustained this plan until now. Mm. Because God could have scrapped it already. Uh, well, he did it. Well, he did in Genesis six, didn't he? With the I mean, flood, with the flood. But he he went mm. on mm. to save humanity. He did not destroy. That's his right. mercy kept humanity even though they had to restart that's are right. you with me yes so what kept it going forever read for me um psalm 103 verses 10 to 17 please okay 
He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is for everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. We just need time to think about the contrast mm -hmm. between how humanity is depicted like grass that comes up and disappears, yeah. withering away, and yet at the same time the mercy that sustains that grass, yes. that grass story, is ever continuing. Yes. God had so many opportunities to scrap this plan of creation, salvation, mm. and restoration, but he did not. Why? Because he applied mercy, mercy. to the frailty of humanity mm. and kept the plan going so that we can say, Lord, your mercy and is forever. Or, Lord, your loving kindness mm -hmm. is forever. Read for me this time. Uh, the same psalm, but verses 1 to 4, please. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Loving kindness, kindness and tender, tender mercies. mercies. The only reason why and we need to understand that as human beings yeah. who are compared to grass that yes. comes up and weathers away and disappear, we need to understand that the only reason why we are still hopeful in this life yes. for another life is because of the mercy, the loving Kindness, kindness of God, God that keeps that plan mm -hmm. of creation, salvation, Good. and restoration going on our behalf. That's right. Because if He were to treat us according to our sins, we wouldn't be here forever. Yes. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. This is for corporate, right? You mean that's the plan of salvation? Yeah, it's, co it's for a corporate, for the world, right? You mean, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, right. So this is for corporate. But what about individual and personal experience of the mercy of God? And can anyone access it? This is an excellent question. Um, back where I come from, they say every grain of rice put mm. together makes a bag True. of rice. All right? So... Here we have already an image. It's not just the corporate. And let's see that. Go to Psalm 51 for me and just read verse 1, please. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Okay. Uh -huh. This is one individual. Your question was... Do we individually, personally, yeah. or has anyone have access to that great loving yes. kindness and mercy of God? In this day, this is one individual personally calling on God right. to have grace and compassion on him because he knows that his mercy is. Yes. Everlasting. Forever. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So the, the, the divine loving kindness of the Lord is accessible to individuals. And this is what this one is tapping right. in. And you can stay in that same song and read for me verses 7, 9, and 9 to 13, please. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. 
and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. All right. So this is an individual personally obtaining from mm. God what he asked. Yes. Because he asked. Your question was, did we, do we individually have yes. access to it? Yes. And we can see it in this. Another text I want you to read for me is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, please. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is that clear there? Absolutely. If we confess our sins and there is no limits on that in terms of who can do it, mm. it's anyone. Yes. So the loving kindness of God is accessible to anyone who asks for it. The condition is simply you need to ask for it. And it is the loving kindness of God that mm. gives us access to the forgiveness that we need as sinners, as grass that withers away mm. to allow us to experience the salvation and the restoration after the creation. Are you with me? Yes. And this is what has been the experience all these years that God has kept mm. his mercy or his loving kindness going. And the psalmist says forever. 26 times in 26 lines. I want you to read for me, please. Psalm 130 at this time. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark my iniquities, O Lord, who would stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for the Lord, th for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his So in this psalm, you can see that it is one individual speaking, yes. and also he's speaking for the culprit. Yes. So the mercy of God that allows us to go on as his creation and experience salvation and eventually restoration is accessible to both the individual and the corporate. For God so loved the world. Absolutely. As long as you recognize that you yeah. need it, mm -hmm. you recognize your sinful condition, yes. you recognize your need for forgiveness, you ask and you receive. Beautiful. Thank you for that. And I loved how you just brought all that through from the Word of God. But where do we go from there with the corporate, the individual? Where do we go from there? Well, we keep on experiencing mm -hmm. the loving kindness of God. This yeah. is where we're going. We keep on experiencing the loving kindness kindness of God as long as we are in this world the path is the same okay if you read for me verses 5 and 6 of Psalm 51 please right behold I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom you see we will not go outside of the realm where we need to experience the loving kindness of God every mm. day because remember, 
he is saying here, born in sin, shape in iniquity. Yeah. We need constantly to experience that loving kindness yes. from God. And then we need to share it with others. How? By praising God, like mm -hmm. in Psalm 136, with the quality of life that the loving kindness of God will allow us to live. Mm -hmm. And the last text I want you to read for me is Psalm 113, please. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes even with princes of his people. He make a barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful ch mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. So your question was, where do we go from That's there? Right. Experiencing the loving kindness of God, you men. Mm -hmm. How do you think the, the poor and the needy will experience the loving kindness of God? Let me tell you for the sake of time. Okay. They will experience the loving kindness of God if we share it with them. Mm. And that means they will experience the loving kindness of the poor and the needy. So we're talking about practical life yes. here. The poor and the needy will experience the loving kindness of God in the way we will deal with That's them right. and their needs. I, I love that. And in that way we praise God with the life that we're living, as I was saying before. This is where we start yes. our journey and that's where we're going from here mm -hmm. are you with me yes that's what i can say the loving kindness of god is our experience of creation salvation restoration that we share mm -hmm. with those around us that's where we're going from there that is wonderful thank you so much pedro for, for enlightening us on this lesson. And viewers, we value your comments, if you have any, and we invite you to like and share and subscribe to this channel. And not only that, press that notification bell because it tells other viewers that you found value in this study. And I'd like you to come back with us on a Saturday afternoon, UK time, where we will discuss other topics from the biblical perspective. So till next time, we'll see you again for another study in the wonderful book of Psalms. God bless you.